right. Hey, guys, this is Chris Dominguez. I am joined by the man, John Lester, the VP of Operations at Onero. Hey, John, how you doing? I'm good. How are you doing? I am doing very well. I'm excited to, you know, get started with this interview. And, you know, for all the people that don't necessarily know you, please, uh, you know, give us a little background on yourself and how you started with Onero and the Endow uh, project. Sure, sure. Um, well, my my professional background is is varied. My it goes all the way back to uh, uh, healthcare. Actually, my original profession was in um, neurology. I was uh, in the neurology service at Massachusetts General Hospital doing research in neuroscience, mostly around um, things like Alzheimer's and Parkinson's disease. And I started getting very interested in medical informatics. And when the web came into existence in the mid nineties, uh, I set up the first website at Mass General uh, for the neurology service. And I started creating online communities to help patients connect with each other, to share support and, uh, and knowledge. So, you know, patients, you know, groups of patients dealing with things like multiple sclerosis or dealing with uh, epilepsy or stroke survivors and things like that and creating online um, communities for them to talk to each other and share data. So my career shifted. I hung up my lab coat. So I got more interested in creating these online environments, connecting people with each other and people with information and, and making it a very decentralized kind of thing, right? You know, where, where people were, were creating their own content and, and sharing it with whoever they wanted. So I started actually writing um, grant proposals to the National Library of Medicine and NIH for, for building things like that in the neurology service. And uh, that was a lot of fun. And eventually decided, you know, uh, I'm going to move, go into the private sector and look at what's going on in that space too. So I actually got involved in, um, I was one of the, one of the first employees at a, a company called Linden Lab, which created the multi-user world second life, which was really popular in the early 2000s. And again, this idea of, of um, decentralized communities of people and content kind of swirling around in, 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 in cyberspace. And I heard about I, I discovered Bitcoin around 2013 and I came at it not from a financial perspective, but because I was interested in any of these kinds of decentralized networks, right. And, and, and distributed markets and things like that. And it was, it fascinated me. And so it became a hobby for me. And then over time, the hobby turned into a profession. Uh, I started actually uh, working on different projects related to, um, to Bitcoin, but also forks of Bitcoin and things involving um, other blockchain technologies, because at the core of it, I'm a product guy. And I look at the right use case, the right tool for the right job. And I found that, you know, I love Bitcoin, but it's, it's great at what it does, but there are so many other things that yeah. can be done with blockchain tech. So many different use cases. You know, I'm not, I'm not a Bitcoin maximalist at all although a lot of my friends are, uh, but I, I love the, the, the uh, ecosystem of different types of cryptocurrencies. And, you know, like any ecosystem, there are, um, there, you know, there are the good, the, the right creature for the right fit, you know, and then there are ones that just, just don't work out because it's not, you know, they don't have a right ecological niche to live in. And um, so I discovered uh, Endow and I knew some of the people who are working at Onero in the very beginning. And it fascinated me because, uh, again, of this product market fit, right? It was, you know, this, this is a really interesting use case, the idea of a uh, cryptocurrency that is uh, self-aware of market conditions and, and adjusts incentives and disincentives dynamically, right? So I thought, wow, this is really cool. And this is really complicated what you guys are trying to build. And I would love to be part of that. So I, I you know, joined the Onero team well, about three years ago now, and um, and I'm still here. <laughs> That's my journey. That's awesome. That's awesome, and it's really cool that you you've been able to you know participate in other ecosystems before you came over and started working with Onero. And the mm -hmm. fact that you are a product guy uh, is really fascinating because uh, you know I study you know the greats like you know, Steve Jobs and, 
he's very much a product guy. So um, it's, it's really exciting when you get somebody that is product focused because you know, when you focus on the product, the customers will come when they see the value that that product has. So mm -hmm. for me, uh, you know, I was exposed to Endow just last year, and I've been now holding and staking my Endow in the Endow wallet for uh, my first wallet for just over a year now. So I'm really excited mm -hmm. about how the staking rewards work. And uh, that actually brings me to the Endow wallet, which we just had an update on the um, the app store. So can you tell us a little bit about the recent update that we just got on the Endow wallet for those sure. that haven't, uh, you know, either downloaded or don't know about the update? Yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah. One of the, one of the chat, one of the challenges we've had is that we've, we, we're very, we've been around a while, right? We're, we're early. And so, you know, we were doing things like with EAI talking about yields before anyone was talking about yields, no one was even using the term yield back when we invented EAI. You know, the idea of like, oh, it just grows when you hold it in your wallet, we'll call it EAI. We, we didn't call it yields because no one was using the word back then. Um, so the sim similarly, when we built our wallet, the first version, the first major version and then a couple subsequent releases, um, you know, no one was really using crypto wallets not seriously, you know, not like mainstream, you know, Coinbase users today, you know, because because you know, again, remember this is, you know, um, the the designs were happening about you know three years ago, and um, so you know what's happened since then, certain sort of you know people expecting certain types of simple sort of UI user user interface and user experience uh, experiences in. In just financial apps in general, it's like they're used to seeing, you know, the big number at the top is always the dollar value of all of your of all of your um, your holdings, and yeah. and being able to see, um, uh, you know, market uh, conditions right there in the in the app, and and also being able to you know get things like alerts, you know, stuff like that. And so what happened was we, uh, you know, this new release which is live on iOS, and actually. Um, it just happened today. There's a new release for Android. The issue with that, though, is uh, it's a it's we have to ha we had to have it on a new store. It's a long story, but the bottom line is any new user coming into the Endo ecosystem right now, they will get this brand new version of the wallet on both Android and iOS. If you're an Android user and you want this new version, what you need to do is your current app. It won't update automatically. You have to delete it, making sure you've saved your recovery phase, right? Make sure you have your recovery phrase. That is because your recovery phrase is your end now. As long as you saved your recovery phrase, just delete your current Android version of your wallet app, and then go onto this, go on to Google Play and search for end now, and you'll find a new version in a different store. And the old store is actually deprecated now; you won't see it anymore. So this is this is actually um, you're getting the scoop here. No one no one knows about this yet. Oh, awesome. We haven't announced anything yet about Android. Um, it literally just went live. Uh, they approved it finally last night. So, um, so both Android and the new new Android version and the new iOS, iOS version work the same way. So, number one is that you know you have this the user interface just looks cleaner, and you have a you know your 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 a lot of little tweaks, right? This is the attention to detail that Jobs would always talk about. You know the the seductive detail, you know little things yeah. have, been, have been polished, and so that you see your dollar value. You see you can open up a this little bar, and you just click an arrow, and you suddenly see a you know a a, a feed of you know uh, from we use Nomics, we love Nomics to get all the data, and you see the market cap, you see the the market ranking of Endow among all you know how many thousands of different cryptos and you see the you can actually see the the price performance over different um periods of time and also um alerts you can receive alerts whenever something happens with a transfer into your, you know the transfer with your uh with any of your accounts you can receive a, a local alert in your phone yeah. and um the other big thing though is you can change where your eai goes at any point in time. So we used the wallet used to allow you to, when you're setting, when you're locking an account, right? You're locking an account and it, it would say, oh, this is the chance, this is the opportunity I have to send my EAI either compound it, you know, my earned EAI compound the yield, 
or send it to another account. And then you're locking and you're done. And then you can't change that. Now you can at any point in time. You know, if you, if you go into your wallet, you know, any account, you can just, you see a new button and it says set EAI. And it's like, what is this? This means I can then at this point, you know, for at this point moving forward, I can decide to send all of my earned EAI to any other account that I want to go to. So that's a big deal because we wanted people to be able to have more flexibility in how they use their EAI. You know, maybe people are, have been compounding and that's great, but maybe at some point, you know, they've got a locked account, it's locked for a year or so. It's like, it's still locked. I would love to like, you know, start redirecting a little bit of those yields to another account that I maybe want to use to, to spend or do something else with. And so now you can. So there's a brand new button. It's the, uh, I think my phone might've, let's see, where is it? Uh, oh. Oh, yeah, I actually got a chance to test out that new feature uh, a couple of days ago. And I think oh, it's, cool. it's really easy to use as well. You know, the button's just in the, the top right corner. Yeah, yeah, it's right there. Oh. There it is. That's the magic little new button. <laughs> And it's on any account, right? So it's a, an account that's not locked, an account that's locked, whatever. It's like, you can always go, yeah, just send that EAI. Where do you want it to go? Um, so giving people more flexibility um, in what they do with their EAI. So that's the story of the wallet. There's, we've got a lot more you know, advanced features coming down the pipeline for it as well. A big part of our work was um, modernizing everything under the hood, right? Because the previous release had been, you know, had been out there for a while. And so we actually have, you know, reorganized a bunch of stuff on the back end. Yeah. So what that means is that subsequently we can do much quicker iterative updates. Okay. Because, you know, we waited something like a year for this past update, but now we we're, we're totally ready to just do rapid um, tweaks. Like, oh, we want to change this UI element. Okay, just do it, push, push it to the store. Now we're done. Yeah. Okay. So the part that excites me about that is um, <clears throat> in one of my videos, I really dug a little bit deeper into the larger endowment industry. And a lot of times what happens in the endowment industry is that uh, there's money being raised for a nonprofit organization. And let's say they raise $5 million. And a lot of times they have an allocation of capital and then they have a certain percentage that they get to spend on mm -hmm. a yearly basis. So that's how most endowments work and that provides them funds as they go on. So I think that new set EAI uh, feature gives you know individuals, businesses and potentially nonprofit organizations the ability to manage their EAI almost like a true endowment. So that is exciting to me as a mm. use into the future, you know, and currently, because as you stated, you can now set your EAI. And even if you have a locked account, which is, you know, the principal, you can now spend the interest or the EAI if you redirect yes. it to a new account. So I think that has huge implications, you know, now and into the future, uh, you know, because, uh, you know, fundraising, um, whether it be for a business or, you know, setting aside money for, you know, maybe your kid's college in the future, you know, you, you get to keep the principal and then potentially, mm -hmm. you know, if you redirected it, well, you get to spend, you know, the EAI. So I think that's, that's really a really great insight. I love, I love that you thought of that. That's, 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 that's exactly, you're exactly right. It's fantastic. Yeah. So uh, with that being said, um, so what, what kind of things can end out holders expect, you know, going into the rest of 2022? Oh, well, um, something's going to be announced next week. Oh. I can't tell you now, <laughs> but stay tuned for an announcement next week. There's going to be something interesting that uh, a completely new uh, area okay. that we are that Onero is developing some software for involving Endow. Very exciting. Once you, once you see the announcement, um, we should, we'll probably want to do another interview. <laughs> well, I, I, I would absolutely love that opportunity. Very but it's, cool. it's, uh, we're going to have, we're going to, you know, we have some press announcements and so forth. So it'll, it'll, so anyway, so there's going to be a very interesting thing coming up uh, next week. Um, 
in general, what you'll see and on the end out side of things is really building out the um, ability for end out holders or and, and anyone to uh, be part of the node ecosystem and to be able to run validator nodes and to be able to understand you know um, you know where how have I delegated my wallet accounts and also how you know opportunities for node operators to run nodes as businesses and have people stake their end out to their validator node and then have node operators be able to however they want to uh, share their um, earned end out from validator awards right yeah so you know right now we've got a we've got a lot we've got uh, you know a year ago we had uh, a year ago it was basically just the five core validator nodes that Onero ran and since then you know we now are up at you know 20 something nodes that are being run by you know other organizations owned by other people yeah and that's and that's great right because you want to have a you, you want to have with a proof of stake ecosystem with a proof of stake blockchain you need to have a, a robust and diverse uh, validator node ecosystem so we have we have that now the next step is really really giving because it's a te- it's pretty technical like when you go into the documentation like i want to run a validator node i think i because I do I, all of the knowledge base articles I wrote. And I think at the top of the one around validator nodes, it says like, you know, if you don't know what GitHub is, you really should stop right now because this is going to yeah. get technical. <laughs> you know, if you don't know what a shell is, a Unix shell, you should stop. Um, and this is common for other blockchains too, right? Now you want to, you, you want to run, you know, a, a, bla- a validator for another blockchain. Try, try setting up an Ethereum, but you know, one, one. <laughs> It's like, oh, okay, I need a PhD. But um, so anyway, we want to democratize that as much as possible. So we're going to make it easier for people to spin up validator nodes and also for, you know, an end out holder, another opportunity to earn more end out is you could participate in the node rewards by staking your end out to a validator node. But the way those node rewards are distributed would be up to the validator node. So it's think of it as like a business opportunity, right? You could be like, I'm running a validator node as a business. If you stake your end out to me, I'm going to offer you, you know, this percentage of whatever this node earns based on, you know, weighted in, term, in terms of how much you're staking. So the more you stake, the more endow, the more endow you receive in the shared pool of node rewards. Plus, you got a free set of stake knives or something, yeah. right? So think <laughs> of validator nodes like that. Think of them as businesses. You know, look at how banks, you know, vie to to get people's business. They offer things like, you know, free set of steak knives or whatever, you know. And so that's the next level stuff that's going to happen. I think it's a great opportunity for node operators to differentiate themselves, run themselves as businesses and offer different incentives for people to stake to them. And those incentives can be, you know, part of sharing the node rewards or other stuff. I don't know. You know, maybe, you know, you stake you know, I, I could see someone, I was talking to someone the other day about renewable energy. It's like, wouldn't it be cool? You run a validator node on Endow and it's powered by, 100% powered by renewable energy, you know, solar or wind or whatever, something. And yeah. then part of like what you get, if you stake with us, we also, you know, uh, uh, plant a tree for you or something, you know? So, yeah. so you can think of people who are like ecologically, mind, very ecologically minded. It's like, I don't, you know, I want to support, I want to earn Endow, but I also want to support the you know the the growth of of renewable and, and improve the health of forests in 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 some country or something so so what's going to be coming from our end is you know we're going to be building out more tools like a um you know the block you have the blockchain explorer how about an explorer that actually lets you look at what's going on with all the validator nodes and maybe have the validator nodes be able to have a little profile so they could talk about themselves. Hi, I run this validator node. It's powered by solar energy. And here's what, here are the, here's the value proposition if you stake to me and here's the, the, the node reward uh, sharing opportunity. Yeah. Um, so, so that's a big focus. And that's, I would say that's the biggest, you know, aside from all the other, other usual stuff about scaling everything and making sure everything is growing. Um, that's going to be a big, uh, uh, a big, a big push moving forward the next, uh, you know, the next quarters this year that that's really exciting and it's it's interesting to see you know that level of growth of nodes and you know i'm looking forward to see you know how the growth of more nodes will support the network and you know make it more robust mm-hmm. into the future. so yeah. um, i do have another question so sure 
there there are other communities out there you know you've got uh chain link they have the link marines and you know xrp has the xrp army you know and endow we have the endow collective so you know anyone that's participating in endow whether they're a holder or developer they are part of the endow collective now um what are the different ways that people can get involved in the endow collective and you know maybe you know, what are we looking for? Are we looking for more people to come in as developers to develop apps or, you know, functionality into the app? So, you know, what what, what would we like to see, you know, coming in to the Endout Collective going forward? That is a fantastic question. Um, yeah, the the Endout Collective is, because again, Endout is, Endow is like Bitcoin, right? It's like, it's an open source project that's out there, you know, Onero, built it and developed it, but anyone can build on top of it. Anyone can, 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 you know, look at the code and get in there and do whatever they want. So, you know, what, what we, you know, the end out collective are, uh, and, and, and go to our, I'm not sure if we've updated our webpage yet here. Let's see. Uh, let me check here. The, yeah, the current Endow Collect, we haven't updated the website yet, but you know, the current, if you go to endow.io and you look at the top, you see the Endow Collective. And that's a really good explanation of like what the, you know, what the whole picture is. And you get to see that I made that diagram showing the flow of EAI and, you know, it's like an ecosystem. Like, you know, mm -hmm. you know here's, here's the energy coming from the sun, here are the plants. And, and the key thing about the Endow Collective and how different things are funded within this ecosystem is that it's sustainable, right? What you don't want to hear is have, you know, a lot of, you know, blockchains come and go. And a lot of these ones that come in and just go poof and then disappear, you know, they, they're not sustainable. And, you know, they have maybe a bucket of, of funding or a bucket of this or a bucket of that. And once the bucket is empty, you're done. Um, the way the Endow Collective works, if you look at the ecosystem funding and staking rewards and all of that, all of this is driven by the fact that, you know, Endow is, um, that EAI is being produced and distributed to holders and being distributed to um, uh, uh, node operators and things like that. So the ecosystem is, is um, all of these different parts, you know, software developers, market makers, social media influencers, and there are different things like the Endow Enlighten program, which is all of this is listed on the Endow Collective page. So you may want to put a link like in your, your video pointing people to the Endow Collective page. You. But, you know, the, the Endow Enlighten program promote, you know, let's, is a way to incentivize people to create educational material of which you've created a bunch of great educational materials, it's fantastic. And all of this is incentivized by this flow of, of funding that is all being driven by EAI. It's the same way for the node, the, the node operators and, um, um, uh, and, and, and all of that. Now, the area that we need the most growth in is really in developers. That's the, that's the key thing right now. Um, what we wanna do is have more people taking existing code or writing new code and having an interface with the blockchain, right? Like today, anyone could create another blockchain explorer. You know, we have the official, it's not even, a, I mean, it's the one that Onero built that quit all the end, uh, all the blockchain explorer is the one that you go to now is, you know, something that's querying the blockchain with API calls. You know, anyone could create a new one. Someone could create one that displays the data totally differently. Someone could create one that lets you explore the data in a, in a brand new way. Um, uh, that's what we really need. We really want to have more developers um, building new things and also looking at the existing code and going like, hey, I can fix that or I can add this or I can tweak that and add a new, oh, I can add a new API endpoint. And, you know, all of our code is on, uh, all the code that Onero wrote is on uh, on GitHub and people could, could just take it and run with it. Um, what we're going to be doing in this next, and this is part of also this upcoming you know, this year, what we're going to be focusing on is we're going to be looking at ways of, of offering bounties for open source developers. So we're going to say like, hey, here's a bounty of how of a particular amount of, you know, here's 100 and now if you could build something that does this or build something that does that. Um, so we're going to be adding that, um, you know, in, in the coming months. That's a that's a top, a very top level focus of ours moving forward is, is using the, the flow of EAI and the Endow ecosystem to fund um, to incentivize open source developers to write code that solves specific things um, that we define that we're going to put up on our 
web page and put in GitHub as an issue. Hey, if you fix this or you do this new thing, there's a bounty, bounty for it. Um, but that said, anyone could come in now and just do whatever they want, you know, on their own, uh, de define their own project, figure out something that they want to do. Um, but that's the area that, um, you know, once, once we get more growth in that area, then, then it's just all good because everyone wins, you know, the, the, uh, the open source development com community wins, the, you know, Endow ecosystem wins, um, people have more options, uh, you know, oh, there's another blockchain explorer, I, I, I won't use Oneros, I will use, you know, the Chris Dominguez blockchain explorer, which has a cr totally right. different perspective on things, you know, yeah. what I get, what I get excited about is, you know, as a product guy too, is, you know, I can think of things that, um, it's like, oh, wouldn't it, wouldn't it be cool and useful if we had this thing or we had this thing or we had this thing? And these are all like little products. But what I love is like when, you know, the community of people go, come up with their own idea. It's like, oh, we never even thought of making something like that. And somebody thought of it and made it. You know, yeah. and it's something that benefits the Endow ecosystem. It makes Endow more interesting. It gives people more opportunities. Um, yeah. That's my dog Stella, by the way. She's 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 got to get a call out in the video. She's the yeah. dog. Uh, I, have three, I have multiple dogs. I have multiple yeah. dogs, and they uh, Stella stays up with me. She's she's sitting next to an old uh, ant. That's an ant miner S seven, oh. Bitcoin miner, that uh, is no longer profitable because it's very old. It, oh it, yeah. It had its day in the sun. I can't. I couldn't bear to throw it away. Like I have a whole basement full of things like that that i can't be, it's like i'll just hold on to it sentimental value put it in a museum someday who knows oh that's cool that's really cool all right so i think my last question what i was or the last question i was asking is um as far as developers go what kind of skill sets or maybe programming language would a developer need to know in order to make an impact in the end out ecosystem uh well i would say knowing uh go is, is important. I would say it could also be, it depends on where you want to enter this ecosystem, right? So, you know, so you could say like, I want to build, I want to build a new blockchain explorer or node explorer or something. In that case, you would all be web development, right? With, with JavaScript and doing API calls, right? Hitting API endpoints and pulling those data. It, and then there also may be, if you have expertise in different data visualization tools like what is it uh, uh well there, there are a number of different number of different architectures you can use but different ways of visualizing amazing looking graphs and data right um, on a web page um i think that would be an area you know and the developers are into uh the the uh, data visualization area it's like wow you know there's so many opportunities because they're already here's how you get the data it's pretty simple just a bunch of javascript calls boom 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 what do you do with it how do you display it in an interesting way? You know, the, the back end, of course, is where, you know, you, you're writing a lot of Go code. You're also, um, uh, you know, you're, you're, you're thinking about also like, how does, you know, the deeper in the code, like how does Tendermint work? Because we use Tendermint core as the, as the um, you know, at the, you know at the, heart of, the heart of Endo as the, as, you know, as the core algorithm. So, you know, there's that as well. And then there's, you know, then there are, you know, developers who are maybe more on the, the um, uh, you know the 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 the, the uh, wallet app development, right? So developers who are who are who are, who are good at um, uh, you know doing React code, you know, yeah. coding in React, React Native, and things like that, right? And making you know apps for iOS and for Android, you know, and 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 those apps could be wallets. They could also be they could be something else to do with Android. I don't know yet. That's the thing. You don't know. What, could be invented until someone invents it so i think it's it's varied you know i mean basically it's really you know if you're a developer just kind of you know just go to the go to our repo and it's like oh here's the wallet which is different from the explorer which is different from the core command repo of the core code base you know and figure out like, what what, is, what are you interested in what do you want to do um there's there's um you know think of it it's 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 like um Again, it's like Bitcoin, right? You know, I mean, think of it, you know, Endow is an open source project like Bitcoin and like Bitcoin, you know, as Bitcoin has grown over the years, you know, different tools have popped up because different developers said, hey, that's kind of interesting. I can, I can, I want to do this. I want to do a really cool 
ex, you know, explorer. I want to do a really cool data visualization of transactions on Bitcoin blockchain. You know, I mean, I, I, I see that's an area that's interesting. Developers seem to always be interested in different ways of visualizing things, you know, and, yeah. and you know, I, 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 uh, uh, I see that all the time, you know, in, in other blockchains, Bitcoin, you know, being the, the oldest one with the most developers behind it. Um, so that's, that's, I would tell a developer, go to our repo, look at it, look at all the different, look at the buffet <laughs> of things. That looks good. I'll have some of that. Oh, that looks good. I want to have some of the chicken. No, I'm, more, I'm a vegetarian. I'm going to look at that. And, um, and then if you have questions, you know, we'll, we're, we're, we're responsive in GitHub as well. You know, if you, if you, if you, uh, you know, communicate to us through GitHub, uh, we, we're responsive. So. Awesome. Very cool. And uh, on that note, um, I do have another little observation and a question. So Endow is designed for a long-term store of value. And I didn't really grasp, you know, what that meant until I started studying Bitcoin more and I started studying Endow a lot more. I started studying gold and how it has served as a long-term store of value to people. Now, you know, why, why tackle the long-term store of value use case? Why, why is that, you know, one of the central focuses for Endo? Well, we tackled the long-term store of value use case because we saw that um, uh, it was something that your average person really thinks about the most, right? And in crypto, you have to be careful because sometimes you get this, this bubble effect, you know, and, and a lot of what crypto is about is the trading, you know, it's like, Oh, I'm a day, I'm a trader, day trader, you know, and the, with day traders, volatility is good because if you're good at it, you make money, whether this thing goes up or down, you just play the, you know, play the game. It's a complicated game. Most people don't play it. Well, most day traders lose. But the ones who are good, they they make money, and and that's good because then also you have market makers in there who are helping buyers, closing the gaps between buyers and sellers. You have market makers in there in the space also, um, uh, doing arbitrage between different exchanges so that everything levels out because that's what you you want people to do arbitrage between different exchanges and are yeah. bringing the price. Oh, I can sell it for cheap. I can sell it for more here, and I can buy it for cheaper here, and then that makes the prices come together and reach a level set across all of them that's the the beauty of free market and open yeah. markets now but your average person like your average person on the street you talk to them about money and they're like i just want to save some and have it you know not go away <laughs> maybe yeah. grow but i don't know how to make it grow i don't want to do stuff with stocks i don't you know so your average person you know what do they do they they put their money in a bank where they then get an interest rate that is lower than the inflation rate. So their money is basically bleeding to death in a yeah. bank. It's like, yeah, my, I, oh, you're paying me 0.5% interest, but the inflation rate is 7%. So what happened to my money? It's worth less, you know? So we tried to think from a product perspective, very on, you're, you know, what does the average person want? I want to be able to save my money and, you know, have it not go away and ideally kind of grow on its own and that's eai that's yield that's what yield is right that's what you know it's with endo it's not interest because interest is with fiat with, with with you know government money but you know it's it's yield and so that's what it was all about and so it was really you know we always lead with the long-term store of value but the the complete thing is long-term store of value with uh with yields right so like the idea is like you know it's designed to be you know, have the goal is buoyancy over time. And what you also get is the ability through EAI to earn a yield. And that's what your average person wants. And they don't want it to be complicated, you know, because right now the yield discussion is usually around DeFi and around like, oh, I can get this APY of 2000%. All I have to do is go into something called sushi swap. It's not a restaurant. It's something, it's not sushi. It's something else. I got to go to sushi swap and I got to do this and I swap and I'm a liquidity provider and there's something about I got to be careful of something called impermanent loss which doesn't make any sense to me but it's a danger and I have to be afraid of it but it's confusing and then at the end of the day I somehow earn a yield 
you know, so it's complicated. It's, it's unbelievably complicated to, to everyone and your average person on the street is, is it completely blows their mind. So, so, you know, the, the core thing of the has always been around, you know, your average person who is not financially literate or, or overly financially literate and who wants something better than what the conventional um, banking system provides. So, okay, my money is designed so that it's not going to be, inf the inflation is not going to kill it. And over time, goal of buoyancy, it's market aware, so it can adjust incentives and disincentives over time based on, on where it is in the price point. It's got a real world endowment that exists solely to protect the floor price, right? So if it hits the floor price, it keeps bumping it up. And um, and anything that it buys off the market goes into the endowment, which is then used to support the, the floor price. So it's sustainable again, remember, right? Yeah. It's, it's sustainable. The endowment is growing because of the endowment is being purchased and then and being sold. You know, it, it's all part of an ecosystem that's sustainable, but all for your average person. Oh, and, and your average person, like, how do I, how do I earn the EAI? Well, step one, you get it in your wallet. You're done. <laughs> you know, yeah. it's like, it's in your wallet. You're earning EAI. You want to earn a little bit more? Lock it. You're done. Yeah. And, and that's always been the goal. Simplicity from a product perspective. It's all about simplicity, right? I've, I've studied jobs uh, throughout his whole career. And, and, and you know, he was, you know, for a lot of us product people, he was, you know, a role model, a role model in a lot of different ways. And I always loved, you know, he would say things like, you know, the microwave oven should have one button plus 30 seconds. <laughs> and if you think about, like, think about that for a second, right? All a microwave needs is one button that says plus 30. And like, if you hit it, it just immediately starts. So yeah. it's like, oh my God, that is brilliant. That's exactly what it is. Like, you don't need, I mean, how many people do that? Oh, I'm going to set the, the, the power to 50%. And I'm going to, you know, most people just like throw something in there and they use the like popcorn button, which is like a one minute. It's like, yeah, oh, this is two popcorn buttons, you know? Oh, it's only yeah. 10 seconds. I'll just do one popcorn button and just look at it. And, okay, 10 seconds, I open it, it's done. So that, that, that philosophy has driven, you know, myself and everyone else at Endow, the same thing, like trying to keep it as simple as possible and hide the complexity behind all of this code that they don't have to worry about. You know, you, they could dig into it. You could dig into it and play with it. But, you know, we want to put the end user, have a very simple, you know, I buy Endow, I hold it in my wallet, I'm earning yields and, 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 uh, and I, I know it's designed to be buoyant. I don't have to worry about that because Endow will, Will will be end down and do its thing automatically, adjusting sib, adjusting you know, uh, adjusting things based on market conditions. Yeah, that's uh, for me. That's really exciting because you know when I first started staking end uh, about a year ago, it was a very easy to understand system, and to be able to get more end out every single day, you know, or to see the the small portion of end growing every single day. Uh, was really exciting for me. And psychologically, every day or every week when I got to see my wallet growing more and more and, you know, seeing more Endow growing, it, it, uh, it really got me more invested into the project and into the community. Mm -hmm. And, you know, for me, that's really exciting because I have a few locked accounts for six months, uh, another one for a year, a few that are three-year locked accounts. And what that has done for me psychologically has really invested me long-term into uh, Endow and the entire community. So, you know, I've also made great friendships inside of the Telegram groups with different people that are nice. either creating content or asking questions. And I've seen the community grow over time. So I'm really excited that the implications of having Endow being a long-term store of value, it really, uh, you know, gets everyone cohesively on the same page. And, uh, you know, we're almost locking arms and we're all moving towards, you know, a similar destination, even if we're, you know, I'm here in, in uh, California, you know, you're on the East Coast. We have people throughout the world that are holding Endow. So for me, that's exciting. The friendships that I've been able to make, the associations with all these really intelligent people, people, you know, far smarter than myself that are doing videos explaining how the blockchain works. And 
it, it's really exciting to see the community grow. I'm excited to see where it goes from here. And uh, you know, with that, John, uh, do you have any parting words for any of our viewers here? Um, thank you for being part of this journey. You know, we, we've we've um, the thing to remember is you know, Endow has been around for a while. It's 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 not a you know flash in the pan thing. You know, we we built this carefully. The blockchain's been you know live for you know we're we're talking years now. I mean that's been live and um we're you know we're focused on being agile and adapting to you know like endo itself the, you know the you know onero speaking for onero right because that's all i can speak for because endo is everyone right it's so it's like bitcoin right but speaking for you know for onero uh, we're very focused on on being as adaptive as endo itself you know and 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 being able to uh get feedback from the community, understand what's, what's people, what people are concerned about, understand what's happening in the space of, of crypto, which is, you know, there's all kinds of interesting hap things happening every day and taking advantage of that to always position end now so that it's taking advantage of, of uh, opportunities that didn't exist yesterday. Cause that's, that's the thing that you have to be, you know, most agile about is, is, um, recognizing a new opportunity and then being like how does this fit with what we have so that we can make something even bigger and so that's always our goal moving forward so you know stay tuned to, to what onero is doing jump into the end you know become part of the endow collective and do something do whatever you want to do again think like bitcoin it's like yeah anyone can do anything with bitcoin you can build anything you want with bitcoin maybe build something on top of endow that we never even thought of before and uh, um and if you ever have any you know uh, questions or comments, you know, look at our, uh, our Telegram channel is the primary place for uh, conversations. And keep an eye out for the en Endow Enlighten program because we're always looking to incentivize new things. The open source bounties will be rolled into the Endow Enlighten program. So you'll be able to go to the Endow Enlighten program and see here are marketing things that we could do. And oh, here's a bounty for a, a developer task I could do as well. So keep an eye on <clears throat> the Endow Enlighten page. That's another good link you may want to put in the video, uh, in, the, in the subtext for the video. And um, thanks for being part of the journey. We're all in it together. Awesome. Thank you so much, John. And, uh, you know, we look forward to more updates and hopefully we can get another interview going soon.